Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering entities. However, in this episode, I won't be covering goals, animations, spawn eggs, or natural generation of the entities. So let's begin. In our init package, let's create a new class called entity types init. And then in here, we'll create a public static final deferred register of any entity type. So let's put entity type of any entity. And then let's call this entity types and this is going to be equal to deferred register dot create forge registries dot entities and tutorial mod dot mod id then let's create a public static final registry object of entity type and in here we pass in our example entity class which we haven't yet created and let's call this example and let's set it equal to entity types dot register then we pass in a name so let's put example and then we need to pass in a builder However, first let's create our example entity class. So under common, let's create a new package called dot entity. And then here, let's create a class called example entity. What this extends will depend on the type of entity you're making. If it's alive, you can extend living entity. If it's an animal, you can extend animal entity. You also have tameable entity and mob entity. Or if you're just making an ambient entity, you could just extend entity. I'm going to be creating a hostile mob, so I'm going to extend mob entity. Then let's hover over this, add a constructor, and that's it for this class for now. Now we can return here and press Control shift o to import example entity, and then we can initialize a builder. Then I'm going to put entity type dot builder dot create. Then let's create a new example entity with example entity colon colon new. And then we can pass in an entity classification dot. And this will also depend on what we're making. If it's an ambient entity, you can use ambient. You can have water creature or monster, which is a hostile mob. And that's what I'm going to be making. And we also have creature for things like cows and sheep. I'm going to be selecting monster because I'm making a hostile mob. And now this is going to throw us an error. And we can fix this by going into here and making this constructor public. So next, after we initialize, we need to set the size. This is the size of the bounding box. I'm just going to set this to 1.0 and 1.0. So that's a full block. And then we need to call the build with the ID. And here we can create a new resource location of our tutorial mod dot mod ID and our example and then convert it to a string to pass it into the build. And that is it for our entity types in it. Now let's go into our main class and register this. So before we register our blocks and items, we can do entity types in it dot entity types dot register bus. So now let's fill out this class. So if we look in the mob entity class, we can see this function here, which sets the attributes so let's just copy this and paste it in here. Let's set the name to set attributes. And then in here, we're going to return mob entity dot func two, three, three, six, six, six underscore P, which is the command we just copied. And then we can add some more attributes to this. And to do that, we can add dot create mutable attribute. And then we can pass in attributes dot, and then let's set our max health. And we want to make sure to import the attributes from net.minecraft.entity.ai dot attributes dot attributes and then we can set the max health to something like 20.0 f so now our max health is 20 which is the same as the player and we can keep adding more of these mutable attributes so let's create another one and let's do attributes dot attack damage and let's set the attack damage and here as you can see i've set four different attributes to our entity however since this is static we need to call it somewhere outside this class. And to do that in our common setup, let's do deferred work queue dot run later. And then we can pass in a new runnable. So let's create a new runnable and let's make sure to add suppress warnings deprecation in the common setup function. And here all we need to do is global entity type attributes dot put and then we can put in our entity type. So entity types in it dot example dot get and then our attribute map. So example entity dot set attributes. And because this returns a mutable attribute and we want an attribute modifier map, let's do dot create to generate that map. 
And there we go, now we've registered our attributes. So back in here, now we need to add our goals. So let's add the register goals method. So we'll start by calling the super register goals, and then we can register our own goals. And I'll be covering custom goals in another video. We can just do this dot goal selector dot add goal, and then we can pass in an int, and that is the priority of the goal. So we're gonna say the most important goal for our mob to do is a new look randomly goal and then we need to pass in a mob entity which is just this then let's do another goal selector and let's add a goal with the same importance and let's say this is a new look at goal and this time it takes a mob entity which is this then a class which extends living entities so we're just going to make it look at the player t dot class and then we need the distance, so let's say 8.0 blocks. And let's make the look at more important, so let's just give it a 2 over here. And that is our basic entity. There are some more methods we can add, such as on death, which checks when the entity dies, and on initial spawn, which checks when the entity is spawned. We also have get experience points, which says the amount of experience that the mob needs to drop when it dies. So let's just return something like 5. So now we'll drop 5 AXP when killed. We also have a bunch of sounds that we can play. So we've got ambient sound, death sound, drink sound, hurt sound, and equip sound and stuff like that. So let's just do on death sound, and then we can return sound events dot death. And here we can see we have a bunch of deaths. So let's do entity hoglin death. And I'll cover how you can create custom sounds in the future. And that's it for our main entity class. So next we need to create the renderer. Under the client package, let's create a new package called dot entity. And in here, let's create a new class called example entity renderer. And in our entity package, let's create another package called dot model. And in here we can have our example entity model. If we open Blockbench, we can go to file, new, and create a modded entity. So let's make the file name example entity, the identifier example entity, and let's keep it as 15 to 16. And let's click confirm, and now we can create our entity. Mine is probably just gonna be a big cube, so let's do, and then I'm gonna create a template texture. And there we go, I've put north, south, east, west, up and down on here really quickly. And now I'm going to export the model. So let's go to file, export, and export Java entity. And then this is our example entity.java. Let's just rename this to example entity model.java and click save. And then let's also save the texture to our example entity.png. So if we open our model, we can see it already has some code inside of it. So then let's select everything and paste it below. Then I'm going to rename this to example entity model. And same over here. I'm going to rename this to example entity. And then I'm going to click Control Shift O to import everything. And let's import net.minecraft.entity.entity. And we can remove this set rotation angle because we're not going to be animating anything. Then let's add unimplemented methods. And it's going to add a new set rotation angle. And we can just leave that empty. And there we go. Now we have our entity model with the cube, as you can see over here. So next we can create our renderer, and this is going to extend mob renderer of, then we need our entity, so let's do example entity, and then we need our example entity model of our example entity. Then in our model we can add a generic, so let's do t extends example entity, and instead of example entity here we can just change this to t. And back over here, that should remove the error. Let's add a constructor, which passes in an entity renderer manager, manager, which is going to call super of manager, and a new example entity model, and then we can pass in 0.7f. Then let's hover over this and add unimplemented methods. And here we need to pass in a resource location for a texture. So let's create a public static final resource location called texture. I'm going to set this to a new resource location of tutorial mod dot mod ID and then textures slash entity slash example slash example dot png. And then instead of returning null here we can just return texture. 
And that's it for our renderer and model. So now we need to register this renderer and bind it to our actual entity. And we can do this in our client event bus subscriber. And we can just put rendering registry dot register entity rendering handler. And then we can pass in the entity types, example entity renderer, colon colon new. So now in our lang file, we can add said entity. So we can add an entity dot tutorial dot example, and then set its name to example entity. Then we can add the texture. So in textures, we can create a new package called dot entity dot example. And in here we can put in our example.png, which we have over here. So let's just drag that in and rename it to example.png. And if we load the game and type slash summon and then tutorial mod colon the name of our entity, you can see that it's named properly. So as example entity, if we press F3 and B, you can see it has the correct hitboxes and it's looking around. And if we moved around, you can see we collide with that hitbox. And you can see if we go into survival and kill the entity, it drops some experience and you can see I leveled up to level one. And here I summoned the entity with no AI with the following command. And you can see, and you can see that we can't move this around, but here's our model and we can kill it for XP. That's going to do it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll probably cover how to spawn the entities and I'll see you next time.